sa ating lesson na pag-usapan ngayong umaga. And um, ko lang kung bakit. Hindi. Siguro sa pen ko mga kapatid, bago kasi hindi masyadong malinaw. Kita ba dyan, Brother Joms? Anong aking sulat? Okay, anyway. Um, so let's pray, let's pray. Lord, thank you sa inyong goodness. Amen. Salamat sa kabutihan nyo sa buhay po namin. Bless you po, Panginoon, ang aming pag-uusapan ngayon. Salamat sa opportunity na binigyan nyo kami pagkakataon dito sa Workman's Treasure na once again, Panginoon, mapagbulay-bulayan ang inyong pong salita. I-bless nyo, Panginoon, ang aming pag-uusapan ngayon, lalong-lalo na ang subject namin ngayon sa Battlefield of the Mind. We know, Lord, this is critically important Dahil Lord, we will uh, address uh, and expose the the wiles and the activities of the our enemy, and um, but please help us, Lord, give us grace that we can uh, do this, and um, please clarify some things in our thoughts that we need to deal with, and sana Lord, uh, ma expose at ma reveal po Lord, ang activities ng jablo na tumatalo pa palagi sa amin at tulungan niyo kami Lord on how to address these things paano i-head on i-apply ang mga bagay po na ito and uh, now bless your people na nakinig ngayon at sa lahat pa ng mga susunod mag-attend ko patuloy na ma mapuri Panginoon sa aming pag-usapan ngayong umaga and this we ask in Jesus name amen and amen good morning everyone and uh, praise praise the Lord sa sa kabutihan po ng Panginoon ngayon. So welcome, I'd like to welcome uh, Brother Randy with us dito sa ating meeting room. Kasama din natin ang Bukod family. We're also joined with uh, Brother Mark Tihada and also yung Dimakulangan po um, family. And praise, praise the Lord. Good morning sa inyong lahat and dito din sa FB Live. Okay, last time po mga kapatid, ang ating pinag-usapan ay uh, we talk about dito po sa ating um, casting down every high thing. Okay. So I put there part 2 po mga kapatid dahil hindi po tayo natapos no hindi po tayo natapos at yung part natin na ano ay uh, kailangan natin pagpatuloy ngayon. So so with that regard po mga kapatid uh, we we we'd like to continue and um um stop ko lang yung share no. So para po ay makita po natin uh, lalo pa at maintindihan natin ang issue nating gustong i-point out po mga kapatid ngayong umaga. Okay, so Okay. Uh, we talk about last time po mga kapatid, it, of course dito tayo sa 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 na sa second part tayo ng verse 5. So, we talk about already verse 5 at this is now the unmasking kung ano talaga yung mga kalaban natin. That's why we entitled this the battlefield of the mind because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we are wrestling against principles, not just principalities and powers, but also against ideology, against doctrine, against mindset. And all of these things are, it's the battle for the truth or some it's also a battle against the truth kasi may nag against din sa atin but sa atin it's winning or knowing winning by knowing the truth po mga kapatid so we need to to understand this this is the warfare and uh, in verse number 3 it tells us the nature of our warfare amen in verse number 4 it tells us then the nature of our weaponry and in verse number 5, it details also kung ano yung ating mga enemy. So verse 4, second part, it is through the pulling down of the strongholds. So it is about pulling down the strongholds and this is not a physical stronghold by, in a physical warfare, but this is the strongholds in the mind, the strongholds in the person's life. So what are these strongholds? We're not talking of a strongholds of bricks and a high tower po mga kapatid of bricks, but we're talking of a stronghold of imaginations in verse number five and also a stronghold of every high thing. We're not talking of a high tower in a physical warfare, but we're talking of a high thing. 
and we're talking in, also in verse number five. If we if we still have time, we will run down doon sa and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we're fighting against thought. Okay, we have the high thing and I imagination, the high thing and the thought. So it's more of uh, it's more of ideology po mga kapatid ng ating kaaway po dito. So we discussed already casting down imagination. So we will connect that later on, the imagination and the high thing. So, and not only mga kapatid, we are to cast down imaginations, but also every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So, ibig sabihin, we see the word and po mga kapatid, between imagination and high thing, the word and there, it indicates clearly po mga kapatid that they are not the same thing. Rather, high thing is in addition po mga kapatid, to imagination that are to be cast down and that are to be destroyed. In our previous lesson, we talk about what is, ano yung ibig sabihin ng pulling down and cast down. So we define it clearly, ano yung strongholds. Now, we, we are we are engaged with the word high thing. So last week po mga kapatid, I, we, we dealt more on the nature of the high thing. And because this, the, the, the meaning of this high thing po mga kapatid have, have escaped to many, many ano po mga kapatid, commentaries and many, many teachers and teachings nila po mga kapatid ang, ang real sense ng high thing. People tend to spiritualize these things. But if you look at Romans 8.39 po mga kapatid, it could be considered as height kasi neither height nor depth. A height means an opposed to to depth po mga kapatid. So ibig sabihin, it's anything that is high mga kapatid. So it may refer or kaya nga the Bible says it exalted itself. So why it's high that that uh, ano po mga kapatid, it exalted itself. Okay? Now, it could or it could be anything na makikita po natin any high thing just like principalities, like thrones, like dominions, like powers. Or in Ephesians chapter number 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world. Rulers means high, the princes, they're high. Do you see that? Principalities comes from the word principles. Amen. And powers, so authorities. We're talking of authorities and rulers. So they are in high lofty position. And also spiritual wickedness. Where is that spiritual wickedness? In high places. So um, uh, obviously the Bible is telling us that ang mga kaaway po natin ay hindi pipitsugin. They are placed in a high position, in a lofty position. And they're not just something na ano po mga kapatid na, na commoners or low grade na mga, na mga enemies but we're, we're, we're fighting not the flesh and blood but against principalities and power or, or what we call the high rank, ranking enemies po mga kapatid. So mga, mga ano po, mga elites. Okay. It could mean that po mga kapatid that contented against the knowledge of God because they're content, uh, contending against God po mga kapatid. They're resisting God. Or mga kapatid, it could refer also to any form of any form of structured knowledge or wisdom. When I say structured knowledge or wisdom or when I say structured, it means systematic. Okay, it is a systematic approach po mga kapatid. By the way, we talked about that last week, mga kapatid. Any form of structured knowledge and wisdom, but this is not the knowledge of God, but the, rather this knowledge is against or opposed the knowledge of God. This wisdom is not the wisdom of God, but the wisdom of men, which is also against the wisdom of God. So any opposition, whether knowledge or wisdom that are structured, designed, mga kapatid, to oppose, Okay, designed to counterfeit po mga kapatid or to counter the wisdom of God 
and the knowledge of God could be considered as high thing, which we talk about. And one of the meetings uh, na pinag-usapan po na isa sa mga topic ng pinag-usapan namin sa meeting is with, when it comes to this structured knowledge and wisdom, which last night, uh, structured knowledge and wisdom, which is opposed amen, to the knowledge and wisdom of God, which is humanistic in approach po mga kapatid and not ano po according to the power and the demonstration of the spirit but rather po mga kapatid, uh, but uh, but more of the wisdom of men and uh, Paul was very careful when he preached and when he teach that he made to it that he did not come in the excellency of speech nor of knowledge but of the power of God and the demonstration of the Spirit that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. So yun po yung ano po ni Apostle Paul po mga kabatid. So any, any structured knowledge or wisdom or it could be a philosophy. The Bible says in Colossians 2.8 Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy or vain deceit po mga kabatid. Amen after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So isa sa in-employ ng jablo po mga kapatid, remember, this is hand in hand doon sa part natin ng attack the message, yung three policies of Satan, okay, uh, the three policies of evil ng jablo is number one, to attack the message. At isa sa in-employ ng jablo na sisirain, atakihin yung minsay ng Panginoon, i-corrupt ang minsay ng Panginoon or i-counter ang minsay ng Panginoon, i-oppose ang minsay ng Panginoon is philosophy. And this word na, of course, we, may, sa college, may masubject tayong philosophy, may subject tayong humanity. And we know po mga kapatid, if you are, if you are a Bible or if a Bible believer or, or a Christian studying doon po sa mga universities, you know, it's obviously it is anti-God, anti-Bible, and they are trying to educate people po mga kabatid to, uh, ano po, to, to have a thinking apart than uh, the thinking of God po mga kabatid sa kanila, patungkol sa, sa kanila. So, makikita po natin, these are designed, ito pong any structured or knowledge or wisdom is designed to oppose or, or exalt against the knowledge of God. It could be in the form of philosophy. Sometimes, when we, you hear the word philosophy, it sounds, ano po mga kapatid, parang intimidating, no? And yung mga philosophers, meron po silang taktika po mga kapatid that they must be right because of their, ano po mga kapatid, their pride that uh, the proponents of philosophy ay, ano po mga kapatid, ay, ay mga brilliant men, mga learned men, and in history, so they, then ang proponent ng biblical revelation or naniwala ng biblical belief ay mga pipitsugin lang, mga hindi professionals, mga hindi educated, mga simple people lang. And uh, yun, that's why they, they take pride of that and they exalted itself po mga kabatid against the knowledge of God. So it's more of they puff mga kabatid and they exalt, nagiging high-minded po sila. And sometimes they may have some complicated explanation that they may sound scholarly po mga kabatid and itong philosophy po na ito, but they are all man's wisdom and they're not actually deep. If you want to know the deep things of God po mga kabatid, they are in, they are in the Bible and it is the revelation of the Spirit that the Spirit will show you all things, yea, even the deep things of God. So yun yung mga deep things. There is no deep things outside from the biblical revelation. That's the point of view of the Bible believer po mga kapatid. But this formulated and structured knowledge and wisdom was designed in a form of philosophy or maybe science, falsely so-called po mga kapatid, according to 1 Timothy chapter number 6, science, the opposition of science, falsely so-called. So they're there designed to oppose. They're designed to oppose po mga kapatid. And uh, but if, if if you look at philosophy, that it is a compound to compound Greek word. It is transliterated from a Greek word or words, which is fellow then sophi po mga kabatid. It's it it is made up of of phileo and sophia. So when you compound them together, you know phileo means love and sophia 
Mga kapatid, means wisdom. Kaya kapag may pangalang Sophia na babae, it means wisdom. So, i- ibig sabihin, it is love of wisdom. But this, take note, this is not the wisdom of God. But this is the wisdom of men and the wisdom of this world as opposed to men. Ay, as opposed to the wisdom of God. So, I'd like you to understand that way po, mga kapatid, that there are really ideologies and philosophies in this world that are designed, amen, to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So these are high things. Amen. Anything that puff, anything that exalts against the knowledge of God, against gustong itaas, gustong magkaroon ng preeminence over the knowledge of God, po mga kapatid. You know, there, the highest knowledge that a man could attain, po mga kapatid, is the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God. But the truth of the matter is, nobody could attain such because it is It is ano po mga kapatid it is unsearchable it is past finding out in which we are going to look at that later po mga kapatid but the the point mga kapatid is there are these self conceited structured or system of men that trying to uh, ano po mga kapatid to oppose or exalt itself against the knowledge of God but the truth of the matter is They are not something, mga kapatid. They may sound fancy. They may sound intimidating. So ano natapos mo? May major ko ng philosophy. So they may sound intimidating po, mga kapatid. But I'm telling you, there. the Bible says, define philosophy as empty. The Bible says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. First and foremost, philosophy, this humanistic wisdom is a deceit. It is not factual. It's a deceit. Panggugoyo. But secondly, it's a vain deceit. Nantina po natin? Vain deceit. So, ibig sabihin, empty deceit. They may, they may sound fancy. They may sound scholarly. They may sound deep. They may sound complicated. Para mahirap mong intindihin, mahirap mong i-analyze. But the truth of the matter is, they may sound like that, but the reality is they're empty they're nothing amen just like a vain imagination po mga kapatid so i'd like you to take note on that okay so um that's philosophy also tradition you know tradition of men after the tradition of men and there they may be the structured knowledge tradition sometimes is a structured knowledge and wag nating i-underestimate ang tradition maraming traditions ngayon that exalted itself against the knowledge of god they exalted itself more than the word of god marami po mga kapatid and many po ang nagheld ng tradition more than may maraming relihiyon ang humahawa na nagtatiwala sa tradition over the word of god Amen. Marami pong mga tradisyon na gumahawak over the Word of God. You have to take note. Or it could be in the form of the rudiments of the world. When I talk about rudiment, it means basic, elementary, and one of the rudiments of the world. Yung mga nagsasabing touch not, handle not, taste not, lahat na ito. Those are the rudiments of the world. Nagbibigay sa'yo ng rules, nagbibigay sa'yo ng kung anong da- dapat mong gawin at hindi da- dapat mong gawin. At ano po yung example, basic example ng rudiments of the world is religion po mga kabatid. It is religion mga kabatid. Na dapat nating ma- ma- matingnan, makita. At itong, re- when we talk about religion, and religion is designed po mga kabatid, amen, not according to the Bible, but religion is designed based on man's thinking on how they should approach God. Amen. That's the that's the that's the ano po the history of religion. Christianity, on the other hand, po mga kapatid, is is telling us or the Bible is telling us po mga kapatid, how God initiated to save you and me. And religion, mga kapatid, is designed on by their own thinking, by their own imagination on how they could approach God and reach God po mga kapatid. But the Bible is the one who said that it was not men who reached God, but it's it's God, amen, initiated in reaching down to men. So we have to Understand that and take note, mga kapatid, sa mga bagay po na yun. So it's rudiments of the world. By the way, the church is not a religion, for goodness sake. The church is not a religion po, mga kapatid. Relig- the church is biblical and that's in the Bible. The church is 
uh, ano po, makikita po natin, but religion is opposed po mga kapatid sa sinasabi po natin. So, we are part of a church of the body of Christ. We're not, we're not part of a religion po mga kapatid. So religion is a set of rules na ginagawa ng tao that is not necessarily in the Bible po mga kapatid. You have to take note on that. So most of the time, religion is, in its truest sense, is anti-God or against God, against the policies of God. Amen. Dapat ma, ma, maintindihan din natin po yun po mga kapatid. Amen. So... You have to understand that and um, na, na-discuss po natin yan, lahat po ng mga kapatid, or any thinking. Okay? Any thinking po mga kapatid. Amen. And that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And one thing is certain with these things, with this high thing, the spiritual weapons of righteousness or the, the what we call, what we call the, the, the whole armor of God that God has given us, Amen. Is strong enough to pull down, to cast down these strongholds of imagination, stronghold of high thing, or any stronghold of thoughts. And it is powerful enough, mighty through God. Amen. Not only to the pulling down of strongholds, but also mighty. Amen. To bring it into captivity. Okay. To bring it into captivity po mga kapatid. So these these high thing po mga kapatid, these high thing are considered as spiritual wickedness, amen, in high places, amen. And I'd like you to take note this every high thing exalt itself. Remember it exalt itself and oppose against it is against the knowledge of God po mga kapatid. Again, it's what I have told you over and over. That is how the, the devil designed this. Amen. And a high thing then is any type of thinking. So any type of thinking. You have to take note that any type of thinking, whether philosophy, tradition, rudiments of the world, or any doctrine, it could be a doctrine, sometimes our preconceived doctrines in our mind would oppose the the, the real doctrines from the Bible. And how many times the, the devil used that, that man-made doctrine or doctrines of men that, that will hinder your knowledge on the word of God. Many times it used. And how many times we preach hard on that, po, mga kapatid, but there's a doctrine that serve us a, that serve us a stronghold that, that what, is the, what is the goal of this thinking or of this high thing that any thinking that what? replaces okay the goal is mga kapatid is to replace the goal is to resist mga kapatid and the goal po mga kapatid is to oppose the knowledge of God yan po eh. that's why there's a high thing they are to replace resist oppose po mga kapatid that is a counterpart to the true knowledge of God. And that is that is the ano po, that is the, the mindset of the Antichrist. He was there to oppose and to resist the things of God. Look at look at uh Second Thessalonians chapter number two. This man of sin in verse number four, who opposed Seth and exalted. So the any thinking that replaced and Exalts. Okay. Against the knowledge of God. That could be considered as a high thing. Okay. So, ano sabi po? Ano ang mentality ng Antichrist? who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God. And ingat po tayo po mga kapatid. Ingat po tayo. But let's be very careful po mga kapatid. Amen. Do you remember, I, I gave you a lengthy discussion on Romans 1 verse 21 to 25, that when men knew God, when men knew who God was, the problem in verse 21 in Romans 1, 
glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful. But ano nangyari? But became vain in their imagination. So in the vanity of their imagination and the foolishness, mga kapatid, of their darkened heart, humanity, man, or humanity changed the glory of God into an image. And that is the invention of idolatry. That is now the invention of the first religion, which is an idolaters, po mga kapatid. And they designed their own God because they have not accepted the God according to the revelation has given to them. And they don't want to be accountable to that God, so they designed their own God, mga kapatid. But the God of the Bible, amen, created man after his own image. But this fallen humanity, po mga kapatid, created their own God after their own imagination and based on their own fallen image. And the tendency, the result, mga kapatid, po mga kapatid, it thereby they worship the creature more than the creator. They worship the creature more. More than the Creator. Now, if you look at Romans chapter number one, in essence, po mga kapatid, that mankind left the knowledge of God. Amen. They left the knowledge of God that he had, that he had according to the revelation, but he abandoned it. He resisted it and created his own religion, created his own concept based on his imagination, based on his. Fleshly mind. Remember Colossians chapter number two, which we are to be beware, po mga kapatid, because these some of these traditions or these philosophies and rudiments of the world, they are not actually based on facts. And even science, they said it's the body of knowledge, but the Bible says is science falsely so called the opposition of science. So the design of science is to oppose the opposition of science falsely so called. Why it is falsely so called? The science na yon. It should not be called science. Bakit? Ano bang definition ng science to them? It is a systematic body of knowledge based on facts and experiments. But if you look at science when it comes to the origin of life, po mga kapatid, they they started with a big bang. They started with a with a ano po mga kapatid with a with a imagination that's not facts that millions and billions and billions of years ago it started with all so it is based on theory not based on facts not based on ano po mga kapatid evidence po mga kapatid and that is how religion not only religion is created based on imagination or on on their fleshly mind po mga kapatid But the same true with many of the philosophies and tradition and even science falsely so-called po mga kapatid or religion po mga kapatid. And they, they end up, they abandoned the, the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God and created his own philosophy, created his own science, created his own religion mga kapatid after their own imagination of, the, of their fleshly mind. Look at Colossians chapter number two. Marami pong gumawa po ng religion na na ano po mga kapatid? Ano nangyari? Gumawa ng religion na sumikat po sila, nagkapera po sila, pero it is based on their imagination. Now, ano sabi po dito in Colossians chapter number two? The Bible says, verse 18, the Bible says, Let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen. Okay, and vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. I'm telling you, be careful of those who started religion that is not based on the biblical revelation, but on extra Biblical revelation. When I say extra biblical revelation, it is not warranted from the by the Bible. It is not coming from the Bible. And when the Bible uh, closes its canon on 66 book, puma kabated, and anything that is not there is an in addition is extra biblical revelation, and it's not warranted from God 
are by God and is not part of the inspiration po mga kapatid. And that is now based not on the revelation of God but based on the imagination of man. And you think of how many religion today who started out that God was talking to them, that God was revealing to them something which is outside from the Bible. Let me say to you ladies and gentlemen that God already stopped that revealing to man through dreams, through signs, through visions through wonders when the Bible is already completed and we have now the complete revelation of the Word of God. Hence, mga kapatid, there is no revelation outside from the Word of God. And any revelation that God showed Himself to them and God, God talked to them is a lie and it's based on their fleshly mind. They intrude on things they don't actually see and it's not real po, mga kapatid. And be careful on that, mga kapatid. That's where religion started. That's where many, many of superstitions started po, mga kapatid. A baseless, a baseless, mga kapatid, claims. And here, we are preaching the Bible, mga kapatid. Ngayon, they will reject the, the evidence from the Bible because they now exalted their religion, their own thinking, their own imagination, amen, against the knowledge of God. That's a problem now. And be careful. And they're just intruding, according to the Bible. They're just intruding into those things which he had not seen. But what? But vainly puffed up. I, but puffed up. Vainly puffed up. Do you see that? Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. May iba nakaisip lang eh. May mga gagaling. Kasi may mga, mga kapatid, may mga inventors. Madami. By the way, let's look at the Bible. Let's look at the Bible. Romans chapter number 1. May mga inventors. Hindi lang inventors of science and technology. But look at mga kapatid. The Bible says, isa po sa mga kasalanan na makikita natin. Look at verse number 30. Romans 1 verse 30. I'd like you to take note Romans 1.30. The Bible says in Romans 1.30, backbiters. Remember, part po ito ng Romans chapter number 1, na binasa natin kanina, in verse number 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. They were not thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. So they became vain in their imagination. So they started to imagine vain things, empty things. Ibig sabihin ng empty, nothing. Okay? Okay. Nothing po mga kapatid. So they started to imagine things that doesn't really exist. It's nothing. It's not re real po mga kapatid. Vainly popped up in their imagination. I became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened. It is coming from their foolish heart. And they started to imagine something. They professed themselves to, to be wise. So they become a self-claimed fools. Amen. Self-claimed fools. Fools. They're not actually self-claimed wise, but they're fools, mga kabaten. They became fools. They think that they're wiser than God. They think that their high, their knowledge is higher than the knowledge of God. And they, they, they structured, they systematically, amen, amen, and created, invented, mga kabaten, their own ideology and concept and religion and philosophy and they held it too much, exalted it too much and they designed it to, to correct God or to, to, to attack the, the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God po mga kapatid. And they say, oh, ang Bible is myth. Ha? Hindi naman yan tutus, so superstition lang naman ng Panginoon. Mga kapatid, na, ang, ikaw naniniwala tayo minsan kay Darwin. No? Ang bilis natin maniniwala sa mga scientists na millions and millions of billions of years ago. Pero it's hard to believe that in the beginning, God created. Hindi ka naniniwala na itong lahat ay creation. Naniniwala tayo that all, some of the, many of the people believe that all of these things happen by accident in just a big bang and it all appears and it's all like that. I would rather believe, mga kapatid, that someone has designed all these things and created all these things. Because if you say, this is a glass, and if I'll tell you po, mga kapatid, that uh, it, this, this glass just appears. Nobody made this up. It just, it appears only. Amen. It appears. It suddenly appears and it's then. 
Abracadabra, it's there, it exists. And you will, maybe you will say to me, it's a, you, I'm a fool. If I say that it appears, you'll say to me, I'm a fool. Well, you're right, I'm a fool. Because the truth of the matter is, someone designed these things, someone has made these things. Mga kabadet. Amen. Then why in the world, amen, there, there, there are many more complicated than this design. This is a very basic, simple design. But what about the world? There are more complex and complicated design. What about the world? What about the systems? What about all of these things, how the world runs, how this earth operates? What about the human race? What about you? How, what about the activity of your brain? It is so complex, so complicated. And you will say they exist because of a mere accident? Just it happens to be that way? And nobody designed it? And you call me a fool if I say that this just exists merely on itself without any creator or any maker? Oh, come on, Puma. I'd rather it takes a great deal of faith not to believe on a creator. Amen. It takes a great deal of faith. And that kalukuhan po yan, mga kabatid, it's, it's a folly, a great folly. Amen. And I, I'm telling you, mga kabatid, the, these are, these baseless knowledge, this, this lowly, this, this, ano po, this um, empty, vain wisdom of men trying to puff up something, okay, and become a conceited wisdom thinking that they are higher than, than the knowledge of God. But listen, these oppositions of philosophy, tradition, science, or any thinking that exalt and oppose itself against the knowledge of God is based on the fallen imagination of men. And they are, they are empty. Look at verse number 31. 30. Backbiters. Haters of God. Despiteful. Proud. Boasters. Look at the next word. Inventors. Of evil things. Do you see that word? Inventor. Of evil things. So, ano ang point ko? Men just invented this opposition against the knowledge of God. And men invented this. It vainly puffed up. It vainly puffed up in their fleshly mind. They invented it where? In their imaginations. And hence, Mga kabatid, men become haughty. Men become high-minded. Because they now start to profess themselves to be wise. And they become fools. When they become fools, then the, se the fool had said in his heart, there is no God. And they say, oh, God is not real. God is just an imagination. So their, their idea that God is an imagination is also based on imagination, on their fallen imagination. No, God is not an imagination. Amen. God is never an imagination. He's real, mga kapatid. And I'd rather believe this book. I'd rather believe this book rather than your foolish thinking, than your, ano po, mga kapatid, fallen imagination. Amen. Because in your imagination, you could do anything you want. You could think anything you want. Amen. But you are not in a reality. You are not in a real world. You are just creating your own reality in your own mind. But even if it's real in your own mind, doesn't mean that it is real, mga kapatid. It's just in your own mind, mga kapatid. Be careful. Be careful. Amen. So, men become proud. Men become high-minded, they become haughty because of their inventions, but they invented their religion, they invented their own, but they're inventors of evil things. They become what I called po, mga kabatid, I don't know if you know this word, 
inflated zero. Do you understand that what is an inflated zero? When you inflate something, inflation, just like pera, no? It is putting value on something. Okay? P putting value on something. Appraising something. So when, when, when these so-called self-proclaimed wise men, they're just actually inflated zero. When I say inflated zero, zero means nothingness. Zero means vain. Zero means empty. Zero means no value. That is to say po mga kabatid, they try to ano po, put value on their nothingness. They try to exalt their nothingness. They try to appraise their nothingness, their emptiness. But regardless of how you inflate zero, it will never change its value. Zero will always be zero. Amen. And these so-called structured, systematic, amen, high thing that exalted itself against the systematic ano po, trad, uh, na mga wisdom or knowledge, so-called wisdom and knowledge, po, mga, that they're vain. They're zero. They're based on their imagination. And let's be careful with that. Let's not be too impressed. But we have here the true wisdom of God. We have here the true knowledge of God. Don't let anything, amen, that will be above this book, any doctrine, any knowledge, any structured wisdom, or any of these, mga kapatid, be above this book. Amen. Please. Amen. Let's go back to the reality. Back to the reality. Back to the reality. What is the reality? The, 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 the Bible is always right. Amen. And the Bible is, amen, the highest form of knowledge and wisdom. And there is none, mga kapatid, can be above it. Amen. And because it's the knowledge of God. So you remember you remember the high places not only yung high thing po mga kapatid but do you remember also yung mga high places In which I also talk about this last time Remember in Exodus chapter number 20 verse 3 to 4 the Israelites were told in the 10 commandments that not to place any other God before God and not to make or worship any grieving images. Remember that? Okay. And you learn in the Bible that Israel has their high places. If you read Leviticus chapter number 26, verses 27 to 31, they, they're, they're, they made their own high places. They were places which the nation of Israel, these are the places which the nation of Israel would erect their graven images. And you know that's violation of God's commandment. And by virtue of that, God judged them. And in that high places, mga kapatid, where they erect their own gods, mga kapatid, amen. Then my question is, where did or do the where did the Israelites get this idea? Where did the Israelites adopted the idea of having a high places? Amen. They they have taken it from the where from the Gentiles, from the heathen po mga kabatid. because the heathen, okay, worship their god in high places. They build an altar in a high place. Because it it ano po the significance of that because it 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 ano po means 
of preeminence, lofty, and they have to put it there in a place where everyone can see. It's in a visible place. And Israelites have adopted the gods and worships, worships of the Gentiles po mga kabated, that surrounds them. And they also built high places with idols and with priests that minister in high places po mga kabated. You could read that. We have read that. Last time po mga kapatid, in 2 Kings chapter number 17, verses 7 to 11, and also 29 to 34, that nag, nag, naglagay pa sila ng mga pari po mga kapatid to worship there. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, as we know po mga kapatid, that is also considered as a high thing. Anything that you exalt above God or above anything else po mga kapatid, amen, most especially against the knowledge of God, is a high thing. Now, questions po mga kapatid, are the religious practices and philosophies of the Gentile a high thing? Yes, it is. In Colossians chapter number 2, verse number 8 po mga kapatid, those philosophies, those traditions of men or rudiments of the world, they are all high things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Again, what was man's original problem? What was man's original problem according to Romans chapter number 1? Man's problem, according to Romans chapter number one, wasn't that he didn't know who God was. The revelation was successful in, in showing who God is through creation. And that's why the Bible says, when they knew God, ibig sabihin, mga kabatid, that the revelation really reached to any, any souls po, mga kabatid. Remember Psalm 19? Remember Psalm 19? The heavens declared the glory of God. And the firmament showeth the handiwork, his handiwork. The Bible says, day unto day utter its speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Amen. So, they utter its speech and showeth knowledge. Ano yung knowledge na pinapakita? The, the firmament showeth his handiwork. The creation cry out that God created these things, that God exists, that God is powerful, that God is glorious. Day unto day, after its speech, night unto night, show it knowledge. And there is not an, a place or earth where their voice is not heard. Remember that verse? Psalm 19. So the revelation of God reaches to all, mga kabatid. But man rejected that knowledge. Man rejected that revelation. So it was the problem, the real problem was not that God didn't show himself or God didn't provide revelation to show himself that he exists. The real problem in Romans chapter number one, it was that he glorified him. They glorified him not as God and they profess his own wisdom. They profess their own wisdom as superior to the knowledge of God. Although his wisdom or his knowledge was just based on his what? imagination but they became vain in their imagination it was just based on their foolish heart it was just vainly puffed up on their fleshly mind po mga kapatid but still men manage amen to exalt his own wisdom and consider his own knowledge superior than the knowledge of god and that is why god has chosen in romans chapter num i first corinthians chapter number one, god has chosen the very least of all the things to confound those things which are mighty to confound those things which are strong mga kapatid or which are wise mga kapatid amen why what's the reason so that he that glorieth let him glory in the lord amen because god will not give his glory to the other And God takes the, 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 the wise in their own craftiness and He deals with them, mga kapatid, in exact opposite way that man's wisdom says He should. And you see that? Man's wisdom is always a counterfeit to what God says. It's always opposite to what God says. If this is what God says, man's wisdom or logic will always oppose it. Po, mga kapatid. And the wisdom of God is put in display today. By the revelation and the preaching of the mystery that we have right now revealed to the Apostle Paul. And God desires that all men may see it. The Bible says to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. According to the Bible, this, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 that we speak unto you the wisdom of God in a mystery. 
even the hidden wisdom of God. Amen. Which none of the princes of this world knew. Had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So God is speaking to us the wisdom, His wisdom in a mystery. Most especially in the time and age. This is the revelation of the mystery which is given to the Apostle Paul. And it was hidden before, but God wants men, all men to see what is the fellowship of the mystery. But you know po mga kabatid, men failed to see its glory. Men failed to see its glory. On the other hand, there is this God of this world who blinded the minds of them which believed not. There is this God of this world, our enemy, amen, who has also done something so that we will not see, amen, the glory of God, so that we will not see the knowledge of God. They're, they they hinder, most especially the light of the glorious gospel, lest it should shine in our heart. That's the God of this world doing. That's the activity. Man, the God, the God of this world deprived men from knowing the true gospel. And he's so busy corrupting and perverting the true gospel of, of Christ. What is his goal? Amen. To blind men and to keep them away from the light of the glorious gospel, lest it should shine in them. And be, ano po, be delivered from the power of darkness and be translated, amen, unto the kingdom of his dear son. That's what the devil is trying to uh, uh, control. Remember, he, this is his world at this moment. The kingdom of this world as are, are his at this moment. But not in the future. It will be the Lord Jesus Christ one day. Po, mga kapatid. But at this present moment, he's here. Take controlling every affairs of this world. Amen. And he's doing these things, using many of these things. Amen. To keep you from seeing the fellowship of the mystery. And many failed to see its glory because first they have been blinded by the devil. And they have allowed their minds. Secondly, because they have allowed their minds to be saturated with high things. Men allow their minds saturated with high things. When you preach to them the gospel, you know what you're, what you're doing? You are breaking that stronghold. You are letting the light of the glorious gospel would somehow penetrate. That's why preaching the gospel, it's not just one, two, three, repeat after me and then you'll be saved. Preaching the gospel is not just give me two minutes, three minutes, and you'll be saved. Mga kapatid, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And every time you open the scripture, the, the word of God is pounding the wall. It is pounding the wall. And you remember, they have strongholds of religion. They have strongholds of philosophies. They have strongholds of any thinking that is opposed, that is against the knowledge of God. The goal is to replace, to resist, and exalt it itself. And they are there. They have their own, they have their own thinking, Pumapit, their own religion and tradition or their own doctrine. And here you are thinking that as if there is no real warfare, Pumapit. And I, I'm so sad and so sickened that this kind of, of ano po, foolish preachers and false preachers just trying to repeat a man in prayer and they'll be saved. Po, mga but they, Because they never understand the real issue. And we need preachers that will keep pounding the word, pounding the word, pounding the word until the word breaks in a little by little, by and by. Amen. Until the light of the glorious gospel would penetrate. Explain to them the clarity of the gospel. Give them the pure word of God. Amen. It's never, they never understand the issue. And they call us heretics because we make the gospel so clear. We call us, they call us heretics and demonics. Because we say that the only right response to to the gospel is belief, believing, faith. And they'll say, oh, they have to. And they call us easy believism. Easy believism actually is when you, you, let, when you don't actually make clear the gospel and let them believe, amen, what you would like them to do. And say, 
Okay, repeat this prayer and you'll be saved. Without even explaining the real significance of the death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ. And they jump into that without, without even the sinner coming into the necessity of Christ and the, without the sinner even coming to the, to the under, in the understanding of the sufficiency of Christ. And it's because they gave him the, that three minutes. That's the problem. <laughs> and that's a tradition now. That so-called repeat after me prayer to be saved is a, 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 a strong tradition in our country, and we know that. And I, I thank God that there are still men who are standing the truth, who expose that errors, expose that activity and that blindness of the devil. And many of the sinners, mga kapatid, and even Christians, amen, failed to see the truth, failed to see the real knowledge of God, the wisdom of God in a mystery. Because they allowed their minds to be saturated with high things that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. When you preach to them the word of God, they'll say, oh, they have already high towers and strongholds of thinking. And the word of God is rejected. And very sad, brethren. Very sad, brothers. Very sad. Let's be careful. And that's, this is real. We're not imagining things. Mga kapatid. Now, listen. If a high thing is any religion or any philosophy or any tradition or maybe any theology or doctrine or maybe any viewpoint or thinking that seeks to itself exalt against the knowledge of God or replace the knowledge of God, then this would include a religion, a theology, a denomination, a tradition of men that does not acknowledge, that does not believe and proclaim the wisdom of God in a mystery. And very sad na ang dami, napakarami in our time and age. And that is the real warfare of the Christians. We don't war against flesh and blood, but we are warring against high thing, against imagination. That's why we need what? The belt of truth. Truth. We need the word of God to counter not our feasts but the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. And we need to stand our ground and we need to put on the whole armor of God because there's no other option. There's no other way to defeat these things. No way. Now geared up now thy loins Amen. With the truth, the loins of your mind, with the truth and be sober, be vigilant, mga kapatid. And you know, you know what I mean. Before the gospel came to us, we have been fortified with philosophies and traditions. Amen. We have been fortified by the rudiments of the world and by any form of thinking that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. But we thank God that somehow, in some way, the light of the glorious gospel penetrated to our heart. And we, we opened that little gate of that stronghold. Just like that harlot, when that two spies reached to that Jordan, po mga kapatid. Amen. Just like Rahab, just to open a little opening. So that the two spies could go, go there and see and spy out the land. Amen. And then the siege came. Amen. And it break, amen, the wall of Jericho down. 
just that little opening of the gospel, the light of the glorious gospel would shine. And by and by, it would take over. Amen. And bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It was just a ray of light that shine outshine. And finally, the word of God and the truth of God took over and repudiated and abandoned and removed this so-called structured knowledge. And we are now in obedience to Christ through the word of God. Just a little of that. Just, just keep pounding. I praise God for the preachers who keep pounding, keep preaching the word of God. Amen. Never tired because they understand the real issue. Because there is no other option. There is no other way to break these walls and these, to defeat this high thing down is just this word. To be preached. Just this word. Amen. To be taught. Amen. With clarity, with plainness of speech. Just think about that. Just think about that this morning. Now, I'd like you to understand the difference between imagination. I'd like you to understand the difference between imagination. You see, we talk about casting down imagination. That's the first thing we talk about the last time, two weeks ago. Then we talk about now high thing. Okay, what the oh, the high thing? Ano difference? Casting down imagination and every high thing and every high thing. Amen. So when we talk about imagination, we are talking about random. Okay, we're talking about random. Ibig sabihin, this when we we talk about random, it is more of a spontaneous, not planned, not 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 properly arranged it is random it is more of a random thoughts okay so imagination is more of a random thoughts that's why it said here it said there in colossians chapter number 2 verse number 18 it tells us there that intruding on those things which vainly puffed up in their fleshly mind so they just vainly puffed up. So it is just a random thoughts, mga kabaden. And what else? Not only random thoughts, but also and musing. Do you understand what musing is? When you are thinking or trying to meditate on something, having a deeper thought, it's more of a contemplation. You're musing. When you are amused, bag sinabi mong amusement, it doesn't give you any time at all to think. When you are so amazed, ah, you amuse means ah means no. But but when you say musing, you are trying to contemplate and meditate it. But first, it starts with a random thought until you started to muse at it and thinking it all night. And you live in your fairy world, fantasy world, not reality because you're just creating a world in your mind. Or it, it could be a random thoughts, musing, or what we call meditation or meditating. So that's what we mean, Bumakabadid, of yourself in your own head. But it starts with, with, with random thoughts. Then you start to muse with it and you start to meditate on that. So that's the thing, Bumakabadid. That's that's imagination. And just think of that of that, that imagination now. It's just a simply a vainly popped up in the fleshly mind of, of fleshly mind of man, and then started to exalt itself, started to become their final authority, started to become to, to become uh, the things that they trust over the word of God. Just think about that. How folly, amen. Or uh yung folly ng tao, just imagine that. Oh, what about high thing? When we talk about high thing. What's the difference between an imagination is an high uh, and a high thing or high things? When we talk about high things, although a high thing is also coming, it's a, also a form of imagination. It is also a thought that is also, remember that, but became vain in their imagination. So it is a vain imagination, a vainly popped up in their fleshly mind. It, is, or it originated in, in the mind. It is nothing. But this time, okay, this time, these, these high things are more organized. 
they are organized structured or systematic talking of systematic po mga kapatid ako po okay it's more structured thought or systematic po mga kapatid or structured philosophies or viewpoint okay of a world system that is contrary amen to the knowledge of God and also in complete rebellion against God. So, delikado tong high thing na ito because men can be educated with it. Itong imagination is more of a personal thing. But when it comes to high things mo mga kapatid, it is now an instruction through a religion, through an education, And it is now creeping in and people are taught by it with the structured. And once you embrace a high thing, it is hard to get out because it's a systematic thing. Once you get in into that system, it's hard to get out. Because you will be overwhelmed with, with, uh, ano po, mga kapatid, with, with uh, support system when it comes to their, their ideas and ideology. But the truth, when you when you start to discover the origin of it, it was based on vainly puffed up on their fleshly mind. But it becomes so organized. Dito, itong imagination is just a random thought, which is every day we have imaginations. Sometimes we have to cast it down. Amen. By replacing it with the word of God. This is untrue. I have to, but the Bible is true. Or you're just, it's a byproduct of, of thinking or of musing or meditation. But when you go to high things, you go a little higher. This is a higher knowledge. This is a higher quote unquote ano po, understanding and wisdom, which are man made. They start to organize it. They start to structure it or put some system to it. And they are so well presented. Just like the dogmas of the religion. Just like the lessons on philosophies and evolutions or psychology or humanity. Or like the textual criticism, they become a curriculum. They become an education. And men will tend to be impressed in these things over the knowledge of God. Amen. But don't lose sight of its reality. Amen. Amen. Regardless whether it's well organized or structured or systematic, don't forget that they are designed to oppose, amen, God's knowledge and wisdom. And you know, his thoughts is higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And these things are in complete rebellion against God. But listen, both of these things, whether imagination or whether high things, mga kapatid, both of these things need to be cast down and destroyed. Because if they are received, if they are entertained, they will erect and fortify a stronghold in your thinking. They will have a foot. They will foothold on the your thinking that even Christian, Amen, would resist the Bible. mga kapatid. That's why we know many Christians. They were once in adherence to the Word of God, but. When they started to be educated and they never fail, they never 
They never ano po mga, but they failed. They failed to to discern what is God's and what what are not. Mga kapatid. When they failed to discern later on in their Christian life be, they become cynical and critical to the truths of the word of God manifested in preaching manifested in bible study and there is another impression in their heart that the bible is just shallow but what i have learned from philosophies and psychology that is real knowledge and let's be very careful and there are preachers right now okay who abandoned the real biblical Bible study, the real biblical interpretation, amen, and go on doing the world system in studying the Word of God. I've learned, I've seen many preachers and teachers right now who use psychology, amen, in their teaching. They use philosophies humanistic philosophies in their approach just to win people because they have been polluted by this high thing at ang tingin nila sa atin ng mga right divider what they think on us as right divider and bible believers they think that we're just shallows because we only stick to the word of god and they think of themselves, they're vainly puffed up in their fleshly mind. I mean, they, they, they puff them, themselves up. They think that they're, they're better than us or educated because that's the natural tendency of this inflated zero, of this, this, this thinking and this systematic knowledge or this high thing. Once you have it, it would make you also high-minded. Mga kapatid. And you have this pride. But the Bible says, brethren, we are to cast down and destroy this imagination and this high thing or else they will erect and fortify strongholds in your mind, in your thinking. In which up to now, the word of God is trying to destroy some strongholds in our mind and in our thinking. The word of God, every time you heard preaching, every time you heard teaching, there is a principle that resists in your mind and in your thinking. That's why you could not take the word of God easily. But you have to struggle with it. You have to fight over it. And you have to consider that the word of God is higher than any of your thinking. That the word of God is superior than any of those thoughts that you have gotten. And then finally, the word of God could replace that thinking. Amen. And erect a stronghold of truth in your mind. But up to now, the word of God is capturing some thoughts, which is next week, we will talk about bringing every thought into captivity. Kasi may mga random thoughts pa dyan na hindi pa nagpapasakop kay Kristo, hindi pa nagpapaubay kay Kristo. Next week, we'll talk about the third part ng 2 Corinthians 10.5, bringing every thought, every thought, not only every high thing, but also every thought to the obedience of Christ. We are going to police them. We're going to capture them and discover those things because magulat ka na lang. Amen. You'll be surprised. You sit down in thinking you're just musing on something else and you have no desire of to the word of God whatsoever because we have not get rid. We thought that we are already Bible believers, but there are thinking and there are thoughts. It's still existing in our mind and imagination and some high things in our mind that have not been eradicated. And sometimes... Mga kapatid, if not most of the time, we resisted on hard preaching, hard teachings like this. Po, mga kapatid. And these, these things, this imagination and these high things must be eradicated completely. I'm saying completely to avoid making foothold again. Amen. In our thinking. You remember? We talk about that pulling down, okay, your that stronghold to the mighty through the pulling down of the strongholds. 
pag hangga't hindi mo ma-destroy ang stronghold, pa, babalik-balik yung enemy kasi concentration camp nila yun eh. Pero pag ma-destroy mo yung heart na yun, of course, mawalan sila na supply, matalo sila, yun yung strength nila eh. Kaya nga stronghold eh. That is their fortified place. Bawas ma-destroy mo ang kanilang stronghold, you immobilize mga kapatid, you paralyze their ano po, supplies and, and their, their ano po, capacity or power to do things. But the same true. That's why we are to cast down imagination and every high thing. Amen. And every high thing. Kaya nga high, exalt. Pag hindi, they will foothold again in our thinking. Look at what the Bible says. 1 Kings chapter number 22. 1 Kings chapter number 22. For instance, may mga may mga tao who started well, but they end badly in their lives. They struggled. There are many, many sincere Christians. There are many, many zealous Christians who started well, but later on their life, they end up defeated. They end up being crippled. They, they end up being a loser. You know why? Because of this. 1 Kings chapter number 22. The Bible says, look at verse number 43. Okay. Look at verse number 43. Are you there? This is Asa. Okay. I mean, this is um, Jehoshaphat, the son of Asa. At sabi niya sa verse number 43. And he walked in all the ways of Asa, his father, and he turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in he, in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, he started right. You can do right, but nevertheless, look at the next part. The high places. Remember that high places that we talk about? Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away for the people offered and burnt incense yet in the high places. You know, there are people, Christians right now, believers right now, after they got saved, after the word of God penetrated to them, and they do what is right before the eyes of the Lord. They, they do the good works and all of that, but they forget to pull down. They forget to cast down some of those high things, some of those high places, that are an idols that are eradicated and lifted themselves up and exalt themselves up, that there are still that principle in their mind or in their thinking that is still against the knowledge of God. And they never knew about that. But at the end of their lives, they were unsuccessful. They end up loser. But they have a good start. They serve the Lord. They're sincere. They're zealous of what they're doing. But the problem po, mga kapatid, they're still an erected high places or high things in their thinking. So ano nangyayari? They'll foothold again, and one day, amen, they will become strong enough, amen, and pull you down instead tayo magpo-pull down. Yun ang nagiging problema po mga kapatid. Look at 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter number 12. I'd like you to look at 2 Kings chapter number 12. The Bible says, ito yung mga problem eh. Ito yung mga problema ng mga hari, no? 2 Kings chapter number 12, I'd like you to look at, this is Jehu, okay? The year of Jehu, Joash, okay? Begun to, in the year of Jehu, Joash began to, this Joash, and all of that, but look at, look at Jehoash, look at verse 2, and Jehoash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days wherein Je Jehida, the priest, instructed him, but the high places were not taken away. And the people still sacrifice and burn incense in the high places. So, you know, ano nangyayari po mga kapatid? Hello. They end up a loser. They end up defeated. What's the problem? The high things are still there. I wonder how many high things do we still have and we, 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 we petted on those things or we took care of those things. Uh, we don't let the word of God eradicate it, but we 
we it becomes our darling sins. Do you understand what a darling sin is? Yung mga inaalagaan nating mga kasalanan. Inaalagaan nating mga kaisipan. Pero ano nangyayari sa buhay nila? They end up defeated. Amen. And look at po mga kabatid. Okay. Here's a Messiah in in 2 Kings chapter number 14. In verse number 3. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, yet not like David his father. He did according to all things as Joash his father did. Howbeit the high places were not taken away, and yet the people did sacrifice and burn incense in the on the high places. You know what happened in their life? They end up defeated because of those high things. Look at chapter number 15 of verse number Ano po mga kapatid? Okay. This is Azariah po mga kapatid in verse number 3. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Save the high places were not removed and the people sacrificed and burnt incense still on the high places. That's the problem with their kingdom. Completely eradicated. Look at chapter 15, verse number 35 po mga kapatid. Amen. So this is ano po mga kapatid? Okay. Um makikita po natin another king, okay? This is the king of Israel began Jotham the son of Uzziah. This is Jotham, the king of Judah to reign. Look at verse 35. At uh, verse 34, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and he did according to all that his father Uzziah had done. Howbeit the high places were not removed, and the people Sacrifice and burn incense still in the high places. He built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. And if you read the rest of their accounts, they die a loser. They die a failure. Why? Because they failed to eradicate that high thing sa kanilang reign or maybe sa kanilang buhay. So, ang kingdom nila was never successful. Ang kanilang domain and reign was never successful. Because th those high places took over. Because they never completely eradicated. But they kept that thing. Mga kapatid, maybe sa buhay po natin, this is now the, the practical application to that. Maybe we are serving God. We do that which was right in the eyes of God. We are sincere in serving God. We are zealous in, in serving God. But we still have high things sa ating buhay. Mga kapatid, I'm telling you, you'll never be a joyful Christian, a victorious Christian, if you keep those things. But yun po ang mag-destroy mag sa atin one day. And you will never completely submit to the word of God or obey the word of God because those are opposing principles in your thinking. That's why you could not embrace and rejoice over many truths, the word of God, because there is an opposing principle in your mind. Are you listening? You have to let the word of God replace that thinking. You have to let the truth of God replace that kind of thinking. And what is, what is our answer? What is the answer to high thing? What is our answer to these things? Anong sagot natin dito? Amen. How do we counter this? Because it is opposed, opposing. It is against po mga kapatid. So there is a real warfare. And these, these ano po, high thing are attacking the knowledge of God. It is attacking the wisdom of God. Do we just stand and do nothing? Since this is a warfare, we have to fight back. Amen. We have to withstand against this kind of wild, mga kapatid. We have to, to head on and face the battle, mga kapatid, because we are wrestling Against, not against flesh and blood, but against these things, this high thing, this imagination, this thought. And we are 
there, mga kapatid, to pull down that stronghold and cast down this imagination and high thing. And how, what is our answer to high thing po, mga kapatid? Let's look at Proverbs chapter number 2. Proverbs chapter number 2. These are just practical thoughts that I'd like you to, to take note po, mga kapatid. Proverbs chapter number 2. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter number 2, verse number 5. Amen. But let me read verse 3. If thou seekest her as silver, these are, ang context is about the words of God. If thou seekest her as silver and searcheth for her as for hid treasures, then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. And find the knowledge of God. So what is the answer to high thing? Find the knowledge of God. So what is that? Find the knowledge of God. Of course, you don't find the knowledge of God anywhere else. You don't find the knowledge of God somewhere else. The knowledge of God can only be here and there's no other place. This is the knowledge of God. This is the wisdom of God. Don't find it in your schools. Don't find it in, 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 in religion. Don't find it in, in many, many, ano po mga kapatid, organization or structured system or belief. You can only find it here. Amen. Have the word of God. And th that's where the knowledge of God. Have a perfect word of God. That King James Bible in your hand. Amen. There you have the available Knowledge of God. And what else? O ano ngayon? Kung na, nahanap mo na yung knowledge, look at Colossians chapter number Colossians chapter number 1. Amen. Colossians chapter number 1. The Bible says in verse number 9, For this cause also, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So the next thing is not only to find that knowledge, but be filled with the knowledge. Amen. Be filled with the knowledge of God. Amen. Do not be filled with the knowledge of this world, with the wisdom of this world, but be filled with the knowledge of God, po mga kapatid, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The Bible says, let the, the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let it dwell in you. Be filled with it. Amen. Dwell in you richly. And we need that, po mga kapatid. Be filled. And you could not be filled with the knowledge of God. If you don't know where to find the knowledge of God, first, find the knowledge of God. And once you have the, you know the place where you can find the knowledge of God, we know it's in the Bible, then have a Bible with you. Listen every time it was preached. Study that Bible. Rightly divide that Bible. Read that Bible. Listen to any opportunities or any preaching and teaching that promotes the knowledge of God through preaching the Word of God. Take advantage of those things, po, mga kapatid, and be filled with the knowledge of God. You know what's the problem, po, mga kapatid, sa ating mga kabataan ngayon? Lalo na yung mga nag-aaral natin mga kabataan sakit 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 sa mga puso yung mga young people na yon na from the beginning faithfully na dinala ng parents sa church simula ng newborn pa sila bata ala hanggang ano po mga kapatid pero nilabas sila ng kanilang parents na hindi handa nilabas sila ng kanilang parents na hindi pa sila napuno ng salita ng Diyos pagdating po nila sa mga universities pagdating po nila sa mga schools na yon na ungodly ang mga God rejecting mga professors and mga institutes po mga kapatid or institutions and what happened to them? They were overcome they were overcome because they have not been filled they have not been founded they have not been taught by the word of God pagdating dito yung yung Akala natin, akala natin stronghold ang na, na word of God dahil simula nung simula nung pinanganak yan, nag, nasa church na yan, nandoon na yan pero pagdating pala sa college dahil ang parents ay hindi na train, hindi na turuan sa way of the Lord, tent lang pala ang nandoon. Kawayan lang pala ang wall, Pastor Raul. At hindi pala bricks. 
and stronghold. Isang ganyan lang ng philosophy, pang, tsks, wasak na. Isang ganyan lang ng tradition, wala na. Kakalungkot. But brethren, hindi lang sa mga bata po ito, sa mga anak natin, sa atin din. We're very weak and we need to be founded. We need to be filled with the truth of God. We need to take advantage lessons like this. Take hold because there are many deceivers. There are many false teachers. Amen. That will rob you from the truth po mga kapatid. And another thing is Colossians 1.10. The answer is Colossians 1.10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing. Look at the next word. Increasing in the knowledge of God. Increasing in the knowledge of God. Amen. Don't don't be don't say na I already knew it. I already attained it. Sabi ng anak ko kahapon, I think kahapon. Kasi of course, wala siyang motivation sa pag-aral. Kahapon siya sa math. Of course, kasi homeschool naman siya, dito lang siya sa bahay. And nirapan siya sa iba, tanong-tanong siya, pa. Hanggang kailan ako mag-school, mag-study? Mag Sabi ng mama niya, may sagot ang mama niya. Wala, hanggang 21 years old ka siguro. Sagot ko din. Hindi, si papa ngayon, nagsa-study pa rin eh. Sabi ko, walang katapusan ang study. That's why mag-study ka, mag-sanay. Kasi hanggang pag-old mo, hindi lang lahat may study pa rin. So, yun ang mga tanong ng mga bata, no? So, mga pastors, hindi ipuwerke pastor na tayo, hindi na tayo nag-aaral. But rather, dapat every day, every night. Amen. Hindi puwerkeing matagal na tayong kristyano, mga Christians, na you know already. Amen. But increase on the knowledge of God. Because the Holy Spirit will show you all things. The Holy Spirit will show you even the deep things of God. Ang tanong, hindi pa nga napakita ang lahat. Hindi pa nga tayo nakaabot sa deep things of God. Sabi na natin, oh, I know. Ang dami mga pastors ngayon na mga tumanda na, tapos pag ikaw, young preacher, may i-preach ka doon sa kanila, ituturo, ah, bago naman yan. Alam ko na yan. Tapos, alam daw nila, pero nagre-reject sila. Sabi nga nila, sometimes all dogs, amen, ay mahirap turuan ng new tricks. Amen. So yun ang problem. Yung, yung, their confidence is, is in their age or their superiority po mga kapatid. Sometimes ganon. Marami pong ganon. We've been into many conferences. They take pride on their, they have their own high things. Oh, I'm a Bible Baptist or I'm a Baptist from head to toe. I know who, <laughs> we're the true church. So they have their own high thing. They have their own religious concept. Don't teach me or young and all of this and that. As if we are teaching them. We're not. Every time we open the word of God, we're not teaching you. It's the Holy Ghost teaching you. Amen. So, may, may ganon. So, mga kapatid, don't stop. When the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. It is present. It means study. Ibig sabihin, If you are 30 years in your Christian life, the word is still the same. Study, not studied. It's still present. Study. When you are 40 years in your Christian life, the same command. Study. When you are 60, 50 years in your Christian life, the, word, the same command. Study. Until, mga kabadid, you the Lord will take you to glory, the same command. Study. From, from the time you got saved, study. Until how many years you spend in your Christian life in this lifetime, still study. It never grows old. It never changes because the knowledge of God is too vast. The knowledge of God is too great. Then therefore increasing. Praise the Lord. The knowledge of God is knowable. It is available. It is knowable, available. And guess what? We can progress and we can grow in the knowledge of God. Amen. Kasi ang mga filosofiya na ito, ang mga high things na ito, hindi din yan sila nagsa-stop 
na mag-discover at mag-imbento ng mga mga ituturo nila at yung mga ideology nila. Remember, inimbento din to. Hindi lang nag-imbento ka ng bagay, pero ang doktrina iniimbento din. Kaya these are things that mga maraming inventions. And let that's not stop. We could never arrive in a certain thing and say, "Oh, I know it all." God help you. Amen. God help you. Kung ganun, if that's that what you say, you could not Amen. You think you already arrived? I remember this illustration of mine. One person, one person trying to reach the moon, and he said, "If I could reach the moon, I already reached the farthest." So he 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 aspired, and he done what he could. Then he reached the moon. When he finally get there, he discover something that there's still a whole universe to conquer. He thought that the moon is the farthest, but when he reached there, there's still a universe, amen, to conquer. You think that you already know enough, learned enough? You're wrong. The more many people said is that the more you know the Bible, the more you don't know. Amen. The more you know Christ, the more you don't know Him. Because there's still a vast, amen, a universe to explore. A universe, amen, to learn about who Christ is. Because that's a God, it is unsearchable. Amen. His ways are past finding out. Amen. What, what, how, how do we answer hiding? Find the knowledge of God. And be filled with the knowledge of God, and increasing in the knowledge of God. And what else? Romans chapter number twelve. Romans chapter number twelve. Just bear with me, brethren. Romans twelve. The Bible says, in verse number sixteen. Nang sabi ng Bible, be of the same mind toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. So, how do we answer? Mind not. High things. Sometimes we dwell too much on our ambitions. Sometimes we we dwell too much. We dwell too much on 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 conquering more miles in a materialistic realm. We mind many high things. No, don't don't mind high things. Mind the word of God, but I'm telling you, it's higher. Amen. It's more lofty. Amen. Don't imagine vain things. Don't mind empty things, but let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Have the mind of Christ. Amen. If you have the mind of Christ. He that is spiritual, the Bible says, judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. Why? Why that that spiritual man is judge of no man? Although he could judge or discern all things, but yet he himself is judge of no man. The Bible says in First Corinthians chapter number two, why in the world that the spiritual man cannot be discerned, cannot be understood, cannot be judged by anyone, but he himself is judge of no man? Verse number sixteen. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? That he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Who hath known the mind of the Lord, but he hath the mind of Christ? So a spiritual man has the mind of Christ. Amen. If you have the mind of Christ, Amen. You have a higher knowledge than anyone else. Amen. Who can who can discern you? Nobody. Amen. You can understand them, but they could not understand you. Woo! Glory. Amen. Praise God. Because why? Who hath known the mind of the Lord? Nobody. But you have the mind of Christ. That's why, Amen. He that is spiritual <laughs> judges all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. Nobody could could know you. Nobody could judge you, having the mind of Christ. Don't mind high things, but have the mind of Christ. Amen. Have that mind of Christ. And what is? Don't mind high things, 
but go to that knowledge of God. Go to that wisdom of God. Let's go to Romans chapter number 11. A few verses and we're done. Po, mga kapatid. A few verses and we're done. And Romans chapter number 11, I'd like you to, so I have to sit. Means I'm, I'm already concluding. I'm already, ano mo, mga kapatid, trying to go there. Romans chapter number 11. These are my closing thoughts. Don't be too impressed with scholarly knowledge or education or scholarly approach. We are just fooled. But the truth of the matter is, as what we have seen in the Bible, they are vainly puffed up in their fleshly mind. They're not real. They're not truth. They're not factuals. They're just an um, empty tomb. They're just an empty tomb. Just like a balloon, it's it's vain. It's just a baloney. They call it the baloney. The, the Americans call it, it's a baloney. It's nothing there but air. There is no real substance. It may have a form, but there is no real substance. No real concrete substance. Sometimes we are too impressed with their presentation and with their system and with their knowledge. But go back to the Bible. Dr. Rockman said once said one time, if you don't go back to the Bible, you go back to the jungle. And I was contemplating what does he mean about if you don't go back to the Bible, you go back to the Bi uh, to the jungle. Then finally I arrived to that understanding is if you don't go back to the Bible, you go back to Darwin. You go back to thinking that you come from the jungle, you com come from apes, you come from monkey. You know, if you don't go back to the Bible, you will go back to, the, to their jungle. Amen. But don't be too impressed. They're just empty, vain. They're inflated zero. Remember? They're inflated zero. Now, but look at what the Bible says about the knowledge of God. Look at Romans chapter number 11. Romans chapter number 11, verse number 3. 33, I'm sorry, 33. The Bible says, Oh, the depth. You see the deep? Oh, the depth of the riches of both wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him? And it shall be recompensed unto him. The answer is staggering. No. None. Mga kapatid. Amen. The, the, the judgment of God, the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God is so deep. So unsearchable are his judgment. His ways as past finding out. And how could I be impressed to those baseless and base things and empty things? They may appear intimidating, but they're just inflated zero. You want real knowledge? That's the knowledge of God. That's the wisdom of God. Amen, brethren. Amen. I hope our faith stands not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Puma kapatid. Amen. And Psalm 131. I, by the way, verse Romans 11. I'd like you, what would be our attitude? What would be our attitude as believers, as Christians? Look at verse number 20. Mga kapatid. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Thou standest by faith. So we know the dispensational study and context of this passage. Puma kapatid. But look at. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Thou standest by faith. Look at what should be our attitude. Be not high-minded, but fear. Be not high-minded, but fear. How could I be high-minded if that knowledge is not mine? How could I be high-minded if that knowledge and wisdom is not mine? Amen. That I have not invented, I have not made, but it's God. 
And the more I know the knowledge of God, I could not be high-minded because I know in the first place that it's not mine, it's His. And how could I take glory and how could I boast on the things that I have never accomplished, I have never achieved, I have never in made, but it's our God. these are God's. But I fear. The right attitude is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, not being high-minded. Being high-minded will suppress, amen, the revelation would hinder the revelation from God. But fear of the Lord, amen, is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord, is that is wisdom. Amen. Praise God. Psalm 131, last verse. Psalm 131. Some closing thoughts and reminders. The Bible says in Psalm 131, ano sabi po ng Biblia? I'd like you to look at po mga kapatid, verse 1. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor mine eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Let me read that again. I hope that's also our prayers. Lord, my heart is not haughty. Do you have a haughty heart? You, you have no reason at all. Mine eyes, nor mine eyes lofty. I'm not looking at high things, Lord. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters. I'm not trying to, to proclaim scholarly or great matters or in things too high for me. So is this us? Or are we entertaining too, things too high? Or are we entertaining matters that we were not supposed to? Or is our heart lofty? Is our mind haughty and heart haughty? Mahapted, let's submit and bow down to the supremacy of the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God. Amen. And let all these things, this so-called high thing, be under subjection. Amen. To the superiority of the authority of God, the knowledge of God, and the wisdom of God. Amen. And ask God for help. If you are struggling to take this message, ask God for help. Amen. If we are going to get rid of this imagination, brethren, and high thing that become a stronghold in our thought life, if we want to get rid of this, we need to cast down imagination and every high thing in our thinking. And how do I cast down? By taking hold of the supremacy and the authority of the word of God and replace that thinking with the truth of the word of God. How do you cast it down? You will not say, Alis ka dyan, or remove, get, get thee behind me, imagination. Get thee behind me, high thing. No, you could not just command that and it will run away. That's superstition. That is myth. Mythical. That is, that is, ang tawag natin po mga kapatid ay unreal. But you let the knowledge of God, the word of God, the truth of God, convince your mind. Replace that knowledge with the truth of God. Replace that kind of thinking, amen, by letting the Bible, amen, displace it by its superior truth, by its powerful truth. And let that tradition be replaced with Bible truth. Let that philosophy be replaced with the system of God, with the knowledge of God, and with the wisdom of God. Replace it with good and proper thinking. Replace it with sound words. Replace it with wholesome words, which is the word of God. Amen. Let's not be too, I know, those preaching about battles. Now, okay, I cast you out in my mind. No, you could not do that. 
it takes Bible reading. It takes Bible study. It takes constant hearing of the Word of God. Then by and by, the Word of God will keep pounding and pounding and pounding in your thinking. And finally, amen, He will take over. Once you gave, amen, you yield and gave a chance to the Word of God, amen, to replace that thinking of ours. And brethren, I hope you learned something this morning. We'll talk about the second part next week. The second part next week on 2 Corinthians 10, verse number 5, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So we will be looking at the not only imagination and high things, we will be looking at every thought. Remember, every high thing. So walang matira or else they will foothold again in your thinking. Amen, amen, and glory, glory to God, and welcome once again, and God bless the, here in our series on Workman's Treasure, the Battlefield of the Mind. And uh, praise the Lord for those brethren who join us here in our FB Live. I, I have not seen you, mga kapatid, but uh, we're, we're joined with brethren here. Although we're not that many, but there are those who, who, who followed us, amen. Amen. Now, we're, we're joined with Brother Matthew Doby. I, I don't know if I read that right. Hello, brother. Good morning. And uh, glad to have you with us and the rest of the brethren who join us this morning. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank also some brethren who join us here in our meeting room. Amen. We are we have uh, ano po, mga kapatid? Uh, people here in our meeting room. We have nine people join us here in our meeting room. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Thank God for or the word of truth this morning. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the reminder. Thank you for showing us from your words, Lord, and exposing the wiles of the devil today. Help us, Lord, to truly eradicate those high things in our mind. We could not do this on our own, but help us to desire and to be willing, Lord, to, to, to participate the process, Lord, of, of destroying these strongholds and height of high things and imagination in our mind. And help us to completely yield to your word, Lord, and to rely only on your power, not on ourselves. But give us a humble heart, Lord, not a proud heart, not a haughty heart, Lord. And help us always to consider your words higher than anything in this world. And help us, Lord, to, to have that uh, conviction that there is no such knowledge, Lord, to be compared with your wisdom and knowledge. And we thank you for the, the saints who join us this morning. Please bless their heart. Bless the, those truths that we have learned. Let it prosper in our heart, Lord. As we continue learning about you, help us to, always, to be always be impressed, Lord, by your power and by your grace in our lives. And we give, thank you also for this great opportunity. And may it be, Lord, that the things that we learned and, and, and have taken today, Lord, will give you honor and glory and as you look upon us i hope also lord you are glorified and you are praised Panginoon. and this we ask in jesus name amen and amen have a good day everyone and god bless us all god bless us all pastor all thank you at lahat na nandito po sa kasama Salamat, pastor Reggie. amen amen so glory to god we're done here brother joms thank you very much